A contemporary of Clara Bow worked for the same studio and experienced similar star treatment. I thought she was the most marvelous star of the 20s because she was the 20s, really. said there were shoals of it girls but clara bow was it clara bow embodied the flapper girl persona of the 1920s and modernized hollywood's film industry whilst exposing the dark realities of female notoriety acting as a frontier for women's liberation by challenging gender roles clara bow embraced her sexuality and independence by leading the flapper girls of the 20s ushering a movement of fierce it girls her demonstrative films modernized and grew hollywood to include more films pushing the boundaries of women's expectations Yet, Bo faced much adversity in both her personal life and facing public hatred, showing the struggles that accompanied female fame and success. Clara Bow was born on July 29, 1905. She came from a dysfunctional Brooklyn family and was abused by her alcoholic father and schizophrenic mother. Growing up, Clara aspired to be an actress, yet doubted herself because she thought she wasn't pretty enough. One day, however, she saw an ad contest in the paper for an acting personality, and she applied. When she told everyone at school, they all laughed at her and said that it must be a bum contest and that she would never win. Yet, the New Star original newspaper publication acting contest press release soon read in an article that the winner was Miss Clara Bow. She is very young, only 16, but she is full of confidence, determination, and ambition. She is endowed with a mentality far beyond her years. She has a genuine spark of the divine fire. She screams perfectly. From first winning the New Star Contest, Clara's career as an actress skyrocketed, which modernized Hollywood to break female submissive stereotypes. Hollywood's film profits were increased by promoting specific stars, which had actresses typecast in films featuring heroines. Clara Bow personified a heroine who dispelled danger and determination in all of her films. Her arrival in Hollywood, just following a catastrophic 1919 drought, coincided with a post-war boom that had just started to transform it into a major American metropolis. This, in conjunction with the growth of the new silent film industry, created an opportune time and place for Clara Bow to start her legendary career. Clara's big break came from starring in the black and white silent film, It, made in 1927. In the film, Clara Bow plays a working class girl named Betty Lou Spence, who has a crush on a store manager named Cyrus Waltham. Betty still gets Cyrus' attention, although they're in separate social classes. She's independent and refuses Cyrus's proposal, but ultimately ends up engaged to him as he is captivated by Betty's it factor. Clara's comedic talent and sensitivity shines through the film. One source comments that Bao had a natural understanding of the physical communication to need, needed to succeed in a silent film, and her gestures are fresh and delightful. Bao's performance sh shows the power of spontaneity. Clara's film Red Hair was her most significant success since the silent film It. In Red Hair, she played a free-spirited young woman who had three admirers. At this time, America was divided between city dwellers and country people, with stereotypically poor taste in film. However, Clara bridged this gap by having both rural and metropolitan movies, which had an admission price of 65 cents and an elaborate theater experience. She made a glorified yet accessible film experience for people who normally wouldn't have gotten to enjoy it. She filled theaters around seven times a day. In another one of her infamous films, Free to Love, Clara illuminated the history of eugenics in the U.S. by playing a woman just released from reformatory. This film was highly controversial and opened up a philosophical discussion rather than just a film for pleasure, which shows that Clara could ignite debate and critical thinking with her acting skills. Once Clara's movies became well-known over the world and in the media, she was able to travel for promotion. In an interview with Clara Bow on her visit to London, she is introduced as a former It Girl on her first trip out of America. She says that she wants to be seen as a serious actress, which is very important as it was broadcast to the world. In a notorious photo of Bow. She looks discontently and condemningly off to the side. Her arms are crossed in her silk robe dress, and she holds a gun. The, this photo portrays Clara as powerful and dangerous, not submissive and weak, like women were taught to be. Clara's notoriety and Betty Lou character in It inspired the cartoon series called Betty Boop, along with other schismatic female celebrities. Betty Boop was an over-the-top animated character who captured audiences with her audacity and courage, she used her sex appeal as a power. Zach Posen once called her the ultimate femme fatale and feminist. She stood out in the media. Following her cartoons in the 30s, 
because she was unlike characters who merely copied male figures. Instead, she was uniquely her own and characterized only by her actions, not males. This was one of the first cartoons to display sexual harassment explicitly. Clara Bow's Hollywood notoriety and eccentric countercultural behavior inspired the Flapper Girls of the 1920s as a lead it girl. A Flapper Girl was a poor young working girl who looked for courtships everywhere she went. She was a symbol of post-World War I cultural changes that ensued in the United States as a woman of liberation in her late adolescence. Some of these post-war casualties, after mentioned, were that many young men died and or left wounded veterans. Flappers smoked, drank, jazz danced and sang, flirted often, drove their cars, voted in politics, and earned their own income. A magazine paper in the 1920s said, Big business banishes the flapper, as flappers were sometimes shunned from the public for freeing their stubborn attitudes. The flappers came at the opportune time and were part of a greater cultural shift that was going on where people wanted to be liberated and engage their long-abandoned desires to live deeply personal lives. The flapper girl aptly rejected the cult of domesticity, which had previously defined women's lives in 19th century America by eliminating their labor market participation. Instead, the flapper girl engaged in convention and shunned traditional values and formalities, acting as a frontier in women's liberation and individuality when women were just starting to earn suffrage and proper rights. The flapper image was perpetrated in American culture via movies, radios, and magazines readily available to the expanding consumer culture. This allowed women from very different walks of life to imitate the flapper and look to purchase the products that were advertised. Harry Reeser, a popular singer in the 1920s, wrote a song about Clara and her it factor. The song repeated the phrase, she's got it, insinuating how Clara was different. She had created her image and was honored for her undeniable beauty and charm. What made Clara so special was her embodiment of independence and sexuality, which was established from a young age. Bo said during a 1951 interview, in my era, we had individuality. We did as we pleased. We stayed up late, we dressed the way we wanted. Her ability to harness her individuality allowed her to be the face of the flapper era and become a representation of women's independence, allowing people to truly see who she was. In an interview, Clara talked about the behind the scenes of the flapper girl and how from the outside, all flappers looked happily and bubbly, but behind closed doors, there was deep-rooted delusion and unhappiness the eye can't reach. Clara Bow faced much adversity in both her personal life and facing public hatred, showing the struggles that accompanied female fame and success, and acting as a role model to other women who faced hardships. Bow once said, I never had any clothes, and lots of time I didn't have anything to eat. We just lived, that's about all. Clara's childhood adversity gave her the resilience and grit to later face challenges that came with fame in Hollywood. Throughout her experience, she was sexually exploited in face of many scandal scandals, resulting in having to live a very public and revealing life. Clara was assertive and did not let people do her wrong. She constantly fired people that she felt did not have her best interests at heart and was persistent of standing her ground. This is what made her different from many other women in this generation. Thus, Clara acted as a frontier for women's liberation as she stood up for herself and used her platform as an influential woman to lead the flappers to be independent and strong. All the glory was short-lived. As Clara got older, more and more negative comments about her and her parents started to filter in. Clara moved away from all the fame and negativity, living on a remote ranch with her husband. A photo shoot of the two of them was taken at a ranch, and the caption reads, Occasionally, Rex carries Clara. She is 16 pounds over studio weight, but Rex can handle her as a child. Remarks exemplified within the photo caption summarize the way women were talked about and portrayed in Hollywood. Women were encouraged to keep to themselves and not talk about their problems. Nevertheless, do anything to actively promote their mental health as well. Bo was smart and conscious enough to move away from all the fame and hatred and rejuvenate and take care of her mental health. This showed that she put the importance of herself first. In an interview, Clara once said, A sex symbol is a very heavy load to carry when one is tired out, hurt, and bewildered. Bo further speaks on the pressure of the dark side that is less frequently spoken about and is usually silenced. Her confidence and transparency reached all her supporters spreading awareness, and she became extremely popular, once receiving... 45,000 fan letters in just a span of one month. Her platform was massive and allowed her to touch many women's lives. Additionally, Clara showed women the power of negotiating with an attorney. The New York Times once said of Clara, she could flirt with a grizzly bear, which shows that Clara would do whatever is necessary to get what she wants and needs. Her mental health and lifelong trauma resulted in her leading a very lonely life. Clara's good friend she worked with on many films once said, she was pretty and vivacious in front of people, but when you talked to her one-on-one, -on -one, she was serious and sad. Clara was a lovely girl but a very lonesome, sweet girl. Clara died at 60 with failing health as the star of the flapper era. She was a true it girl, making it a term for her achievement and short-lived but never forgotten Hollywood success. Her movie and public persona is the iconic girl who everyone wanted to be and every guy wanted to date, and her sex appeal as a dynamic actress and symbol of the new woman of the 1920s was countercultural and refuted the dated female competitive dichotomy.